Luna exhaled slowly, shaking her head as she did so. This was her fifth night in a row of holding her lunar court, where nobody had arrived. The only reason it felt like such a small number was because of the visit she had received from Twilight those few days ago that had broken the common stillness of the room. It was an oddity to most of the guards as to why the blue alicorn had even continued to hold the court, not understanding the royal pride she held for the opportunity to speak with her subjects. In fact, this pride seemed to be understood by her alone. Of course, Celestia had been quick to reassure her sister that ponies had grown more active during the night hours in the past thousand years, but it didn't seem to solve the issue of her lonely court. Seeing the despair in her sister, Celestia tried to bring a smile to her face by regaling the depressed princess with tales from her students' ever-favorable letters. Yet the only thing it did was cause the Lunar Princess even more despair when her attempts to make friends backfired against her. She was just not used to spending time around the so very fragile lives of ponies. Indeed, she had become very introverted during her time on the moon, and adjusting to being around ponies who could not handle her eccentricities was quite the task. Luna was drawn from her thoughts as the door to the court opened slowly and an earth pony backed into the room, his gaze locked on the hallway as he did so. The automagic spell on the door faded as he left its vicinity and the door closed once again. She waited a moment for the stallion to turn to her, but when he was slow to do so, the princess let loose a polite cough to get his attention. She normally would have allowed him all the time it took him to turn to face her before her exile. But now she wanted very much not to let another second pass when she could be engaging with her subjects. His gaze spun to her, and she saw the panic in his eyes while beads of sweat started to form on his forehead, much to her surprise. Had he not come into the room to talk to her, acting quickly to try and defuse the situation before the stallion broke into a panic, the princess addressed her troubled subject. "'Hello, my little pony.' Do you have a question to pose to Luna Court that I may answer for you? The stallion gulped visibly and opened his mouth, though no sound came out. After a pause, he shook his head and looked back toward Luna. What are your opinions on the politics of this place? His voice faded toward the end, and Luna raised an eyebrow at his hesitancy, but passed it off as some form of nervousness from meeting a princess. I believe that it may take some time for the ponies of Equestria to get used to a diarchy, where before there was only a monarchy, Luna said as she repeated the thought process that had gone through her head many times over the past few months. In the meantime, I believe that it is of utmost importance that the citizens realize I am here to help should they need me, regardless of the events of which I have apologized for and feel deeply sorry about. The stallion nodded, though he seemed distracted by some other thought. That is a very optimistic approach. You will make a great leader when they get used to the idea, I'm sure. His eyes wandered to the door that he had entered through as he spoke, but only for a moment before he turned his gaze back to the lunar princess. You truly believe so? It means a lot to hear that from someone besides my sister, Luna said, a small smile on her face as she watched the stallion with a degree of curiosity. She couldn't quite place it, but something was different about this pony. Tell me, Stallion, what is your name? Um, his eyes darted around the room for a moment again before he continued. Hendrick. That is an unusual name. I do not think I have heard a similar one before. Yes, well, I come from far away. I see, Elena said, trying to see what his cutie mark was from the distance between them. Meanwhile, Hendrick seemed to be planning a quick escape. Both were interrupted when the loud growl of his stomach filled the air. Ah! Luna's eyebrows rose slightly in realization. I wasn't aware you were hungry. If that is the case, I would like to extend to you the opportunity to come have dinner with my sister and I. Not only would she get to learn more about the strange pony dinner, but she would also get to see his cutie mark along the way. Oh, no, I couldn't, Hendrick said, slowly backing away, though slightly clumsy in his attempts to do so. You have somewhere else to be? Not specifically. His eyes darted around consistently, never stopping. 
Then I insist on your company, Luna said once again, stepping down from her elevated platform as she did so. I... he paused as he seemed to reconsider the offer. All, all right. The stallion moved toward the door, waiting for Luna. As she approached, he attempted to push the doors open, only to fall flat on his face when they opened without him. Luna approached and looked down on Hendrick, whom seemed to be mumbling something under his breath. Are you all right? Right as rain, he jolted to his feet, his voice rising with fear and looking toward the princess. I just tripped. Luna raised an eyebrow, very much aware that he didn't trip, but deciding not to question him on the matter. Then follow me, and we shall join Celestia, Cadence, and Shining Armor for dinner. Um, yeah, you lead the way then, would you, your majesty? The stallion seemed to be waking from a dream as he spoke the words. Luna looked back at him. That is what I just said, is it not? Of course, I was just clarifying it for myself. Luna nodded, assuming it was a habit that had come into being during her one-thousand-year absence. Then she started towards the kitchen, opting not to teleport them both there for the benefit of the shaky earth pony, as she knew not how he might react to a sudden change of surroundings in his current mental state. They hadn't gone far, though, when a group of guards rounded the corner, and Hendrick ducked behind Luna's form, trying to hide from them. I don't think so, one of the guards shouted, running faster towards them. With a flash of her horn, Luna stopped the contingent in its collective tracks. What seems to be going on, and why are you attacking my guest? Luna asked, her tone more regal than it had been not moments earlier when she had been talking to Hendrick. The stallion who had dashed ahead looked shocked for a moment before he bowed his head to the lunar princess. I apologize, your highness, I wasn't aware that he was your guest. He just walked into the castle and passed a group of guards earlier today. When they tried to approach him about his permissions, he ran away. We've been trying to track him down ever since. We usually don't allow, pardon the term, blank flanks into the castle without forward permission from Celestia, you see. Luna was about to make a rebuttal when she realized what had just been said. With a flick of her mane, the princess looked at the flank of the stallion hiding behind her. It was, indeed, blank. I see. Well, I assure you that he is with me. So you may halt your search, Luna said, turning to face the ponies once again. Understood, your majesty. I will tell the other guards to call it off. The leader nodded abruptly in recognition to the royal command. With a second flash of Luna's horn, he and his brothers-in-arms found their legs free, allowing them to back away as a group. Slowly, the stallion emerged from behind her, shaking like a leaf as he did so, and watched as the guards departed. Thanks for that, Hendrick said after he saw no more of the armored ponies. "'Twas no problem, though I must say that I find your lack of cutie mark quite odd. Would you mind talking about it? Um... The stallion glanced at his flank before looking back at the princess. I don't like to talk about it. The way he raised his voice towards the end of the sentence seemed to indicate he wasn't quite sure what he was talking about. But Luna looked past it once again. At this point, she was only getting more questions than she was answers, and she wanted to get to dinner as soon as possible to pose her questions to Hendrick. A stressful walk later, and they arrived at the dining room, Luna leading the way past the threshold with Hendrick following meekly after her. As they moved past the doorway, the eyes of the three ponies within turned to see Luna, as well as the stallion following behind her with an unsteady pattern to his steps. Cadence and Shining Armor's eyes filled with curiosity about the mysterious stallion who was joining them for dinner. Meanwhile, Celestia merely gave a soft smile before speaking. Good of you to join us, Luna. We were beginning to worry you had shut yourself away for the night once again. The elder sister glanced once more to the stallion, and her voice was filled with a poorly concealed feeling of pride. And I see you brought a guest as well. Quite right, sister. Every pony, this is Hendrick. He came to the lunar court tonight, and he was hungry. When I found out he didn't have anywhere pressing to be, I insisted on him coming to dinner with me. Hendrick, hm? An interesting name. Hendrick. Caden seemed to roll the syllables over her taste buds to get a feel for the odd semantics behind it. It's nice of you to join us. Indeed, it's good to see the princess has started to meet with some more ponies. I, too, am glad you could join us, Shining Armor said. Yes, let me be the last to welcome you to our little dinner, and I hope that you enjoy your meal. 
Celestia flashed her horn, and an additional cushion appeared next to the table for him to sit upon while they waited for the food to arrive. As she did so, Luna flashed her own horn and informed the lead. Luna flashed her own horn, and informed the head chief that they had an additional member for dinner. After he took his place on the cushion, Celestia posed the first question before Luna even had the opportunity to do so. May I ask where you are from to have such an odd name, Hendrick? Stallion's eyes looked at the table, purposefully avoiding eye contact with any of the ponies present at the table. Away, he answered, his gaze settling on a single point on the furniture in front of him. I see, and what might your cutie mark be with such a name? Non-existent. The solar princess looked at his flank to confirm his story before looking back to his face. They continued to avoid looking back at her. Is there a story behind that? Not really. Celestia paused and glared lightly at the stallion, trying to understand him from a look alone. His fur raised in reaction to her gaze, his body telling him that he was being stared at. Her silent staring was interrupted by the arrival of the food, though, with Hendrick's head jerking back as the meal appeared in front of him in a flash of light. She looked at him for a moment longer as he hesitantly began to eat the salad in front of him before turning to the couple, whom were seated across the table from her and her sister. So, Shining, Cadence, how are things between you two? Things are going perfectly, Shining said, the two nuzzling each other's necks. I've never been happier. Did I ever tell you that I always knew from the moment I saw you that day, when I first came over to visit Twilight, that you were my soulmate? Cadence asked, kissing the captain of the guard on the cheek. Except that makes absolutely no sense, came a soft voice from Hendrick. Excuse me? Cadence questioned, unsure that she had heard him correctly. Well, look, he started, his voice now at a regular volume. Assuming that such a thing as a soulmate even existed, the chances that they would be alive at the same time as you is completely against any form of mathematical chance. And when you assume geographical and sexual variables, the chances of finding them become even more rare. The couple looked at him in confusion, with Celestia joining them after a moment. Luna, meanwhile, was trying to keep up with his speedy explanations. I mean, what if you hadn't met? Then wouldn't the absence of that event to have meant the advent of a tangential narrative in which you don't meet an alternative hypothetical dimension, if you will? But I digress. Luna nodded once before beginning her own sentence. But what about fate? Surely, if they were fated to meet, then that would resolve the conundrum. The very idea of fate is unfounded and has no evidence to support it, and even then, his gaze rose and he looked at the princess, caught up as he was in his debate, there should be no pride felt for the relationship if that were the case, as if it were fated to happen, then nothing could change it, and there wouldn't be a point in putting any effort into it, but, as love is the growing of a symbiotic empathy between a pair of people that puts through continued drama and circumstance, the relationship would wilt. As he finished his rant, he realized what he had just done. His gaze moved to each of the ponies who were looking at him before he looked back to the table. I mean... The soup is good. Silence. I'll just... be going, then. He said before standing and leaving the room, followed by the gazes of the completely confused equines. Wait! Luna abruptly left the table as well, desperate to find out what had just happened in front of her very eyes. He's right, you know. The remaining trio all turned to see the cook standing a short distance away. The soup is good.